You know, believe it or not, Yoshi's story on the N64 is a really big part of my childhood. I wonder what the critics think of this game. Oh. Oh no. No, no, it can't be that bad. No. Here's a good one. This is a real review, by the way. <clears throat> Yoshi's story could have been a renaissance for side-scrollers, but instead, it sounds more like a death knell. It's a game about Yoshi eating fruit! It's not that deep, guys! In the late 1990s, Nintendo was developing the next game in the Yoshi franchise. It was originally set for the 64DD, but was eventually moved to a cartridge. Thank goodness. The game was eventually shown off under the name Yoshi Story. It featured bright, colorful, pre-rendered graphics for a fun 2.5D platformer. Due to the N64 focusing on big, brand new 3D games, I'm sure it was nice to see a simple little 2D game on the way. A pre-rendered, gorgeous-looking N64 follow-up to an SNES classic! Things were looking real good for this game! The game was eventually released in Japan in 1997, but here in the States we wouldn't get our first taste of the game until March 7th, 1998, when Nintendo pre-launched the game out of nowhere in a town named Lizard Lick, North Carolina. What? The town only had a population of around 1,300 people, so unless you drove out to play it, there really wasn't a point to this. The game's advertising relied heavily on licking things and tongues because, well, Yoshi. So I guess Lizard Lick made sense. But that's such a weird advertising choice. Anywho, the game was set to release on March 9th, 1998, but was then halted by the storm El Nino? Dude, what is happening with the release of this game? Finally, on March 10th, 1998, Yoshi Story released in the United States, and as I said before, everyone hated it. The reviews praised this game for its music and art style, but as for the gameplay, it was deemed too simple. But I have a soft spot for this game. I grew up in the Wii era. So, the game that really hooked me on the idea of gaming and led me to wanting more was Mario Kart Wii. And for a while, it felt like that was the first game I ever really played. But it's not. Growing up, my family had always had an N64. We had a lot of sports titles on it, and while I enjoy a golf game every now and then, sports games aren't typically my thing, but my earliest memory that I can recall is sitting down with a cookie playing Yoshi Story. I don't remember much of it, all I knew is it made me happy. So forgive me if I'm a little biased, but this is the first game I ever played. So from what I remember as a kid, this game was great, but everyone hates it. So I figured what the heck, it's time I sat down and played through Yoshi Story years later. I don't get it. How could you hate this? Anyway, how the story goes is Baby Bowser steals the Yoshi's happy fruit tree, and it makes all the Yoshis depressed. So they set out to go get the tree back. So the first thing you'll notice is this game looks great. The locations are very pretty, lively, and colorful. Each level is filled with vibrant enemies, and it really nails the storybook aesthetic it's going for. Yoshi games always have such a fun art style, but I feel like this one really laid the groundwork for games like Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U and Yoshi's Crafted World on the Switch. But the game doesn't really give you too many options. I mean, the only two real game modes here are story and time trials. And as for the story mode, it's incredibly short. The game runs you through six levels, then bam, you beat Baby Bowser and get the super happy fruit tree back. But just like most Nintendo games, the length comes from searching and completing things. To unlock new levels, you have to find the multiple hearts scattered around each maze-like level before you can clear it. And this is where the fun part comes in. To clear a stage, you have to grab all the fruit on your border, which means if you want to keep exploring, you could just stop grabbing fruit and explore to your leisure. The gameplay style really complements the exploration aspects. Typically, I don't care for exploring more than I have to in levels. It's just how I prefer to play video games, but I didn't mind it here. I think the setup works really well and the game is just fun to run around in. Now let's talk about Yoshi. He's a little slippery and the platforming isn't as tight as I prefer it like in Mario games, but it's definitely manageable. 
He can use his tongue to lick fruit from long distances or eat enemies. He's got his iconic flutter jump and he can throw eggs, but this time with much more control than the previous games. The game starts you off with a little group of Yoshis. You must complete the story with just these Yoshis. If they die, well... Oh. Oh no. Man, they don't come back. Unless you have a white shy guy. But when you die, none of the Yoshis seem too disturbed by the fact that their friend just doesn't come back. It's just like, oh well, he's gone anyway, my turn. Like, where are they taking him? Don't put him in there! But as for Yoshi himself, this is my personal favorite design. He's got a big head, and I think that works for his proportions better than his modern design. I might be biased to things with big heads because my head is massive, but I think his design is really solid here. Now, as I said before, the game has you collecting just enough fruit on the border to complete each level. And from the reviews I read, the common problem I saw was this game is way too easy. And I'm not gonna say it's not, this isn't a difficult game, nor is it a long game. But if you're expecting a sequel to Yoshi's Island, this is not that. If you're up for a relaxing, happy game, yeah, this is perfect for you. Once Yoshi collects all the fruit, the screen explodes with light to near blinding levels. Unless it's a boss battle, then the screen falls apart, which when I saw this as a kid, I thought this was the coolest transition. In reality, this is a two minute PowerPoint transition. But as for the boss battles, they're all right. Other than their designs, they aren't very memorable. And they're rather easy. I mean, Baby Bowser, the final boss, is super easy to defeat. Like, way easier than the rest of the game. And that's saying something. But that's not the game's biggest defense here. I think its biggest problem is why can't you use the N64 D-pad? There's like not a single game I can name off the top of my head that uses it. This would have been the perfect chance. Sure, I get it. It's a 2.5D platformer. But is it really? Only like once or twice you get the chance to swap directions. That could have been easily done with the D-pad. Is this a real complaint? No, it's not that big of a deal. It just bugs me. I mean, I might be a little biased when it comes to this game because this is the first game I ever played, and for that reason alone, it's very special to me. I mean, think of the first game you ever played. I'm sure you've got a special place in your heart for it, but genuinely, I think there's a lot of fun to be had here. No, I don't really think this is a must play, but if you have the means to give it a shot, I'd say go for it. It's a relaxing time with great music, fun visuals, and cool locations. The whole point of the game is to make you happy. It's really charming from start to end. Just go in knowing that this isn't a sequel to Yoshi's Island. This is very much its own relaxing thing. And hey, if you can't get enough of Yoshi's Story, go play the official Sonic Lost World Wii U exclusive Yoshi Story level. I'm sorry, the official Sonic Lost World's what?